like this morning. I, I, I want to talk to you this morning about this gospel reading because this is so vitally important to who we are. Mary comes into the tomb. Now this is where we always get that painting. How, how many of you have ever seen paintings of Peter before? No? Have you ever seen a painting of this, of this scene? Peter looks like me. He's got his gun on him. You know, that's, what they, that's how they get that, you know, he was the slowest and, and the one that, that loved Jesus the most, his beloved disciple, they always guess is John. We don't know that for sure, but, but they always put a gun on poor Peter. That's, that's what made him slow. You know, that he was a little slower than everybody else. I find him. But Mary goes into this tomb, and I think this is important to understand, is that she saw him as a gardener. Who is the first gardener? Adam. He was the true Adam. How Adam was supposed to be before the temptation. And he saw, she saw him as Adam. And then she, her mind started going to the normal questions that you and I would have gone to, right? You would have asked the same thing. If you were this close to Jesus Christ, listen, wherever you put the body, just tell us, we'll, we'll put it back. She's thinking earthly, what she knows right now. And imagine how her mind must have been blown when all of a sudden, here's Jesus. Whoa, I saw you three days ago and you had nails in your hands. I saw when they put a spear in your side. Wow. Twisted her around. Twisted her whole concept of earthly and, and what's real and what's right and what's wrong. It just twisted everything for her. And you and I would have been the same way. But this morning it, it, it shows us then the good news for all of us. It doesn't matter what you've done in the past. It doesn't matter where you've been, what crimes you've done, what sins you've committed. It doesn't matter because you've already proven you can't do it without a Savior. It took Jesus on the cross to pay the price. And that's why we call it Good Friday, but it's sad, isn't it? Friday's sad. Those of us that were here on, on Friday, you know, it, it's, it's very dour. Everybody's wearing black, you're fasting, you know, and you just, uh, this is not very good. But it is good. Because it proved that day that death no longer had a grip on us. I wonder, you know, if, if Jesus hadn't come along, we might see hearses with luggage racks on them. You know, because that was all it was. Once you died, that's all it was. So you just might as well take everything with you. You know, all right, I'm going to bury me with all my money and all my stuff. You know, for some of us, with man cage, you know, you see a pool table on top of the hearse and, you know, a couple neon lights and some deer heads for some of you guys. You know, I mean, it, it, that's what have been, that's all there is. But what Jesus comes to do is say, it's not all there is. I'm giving you life eternal. It, the, the death no longer has a grip on you. On Easter Sunday, hell cried. Satan was so, like, I can't believe he did this. He tricked me. Yes, because I invented it. This was my story from the very beginning, that I was going to send my son to you. And that he was going to pay the price for us that can't do it. How many of you have lived this morning by all ten commandments? Not one of us. We didn't live by the law. What happened was God had to send his first fruits. He had to send Jesus Christ, the perfect offering, the one that took up all our sins that no that didn't know any sin. So whatever your life is, I don't care where you come from. I don't care what you've done in the past. It doesn't matter with me just as much as it doesn't matter with God. That Jesus Christ came to reconcile that. So when we confess our sins, we say to Jesus, I'm sorry for what I did, but thank you for what you did for me on this day. That I don't have control of myself. Just like I told the kids, you put something shiny in front of most of us, and we'll be like, look at that. It's a, you know, I mean, why, why, why is a bass boat so shiny? So we'll buy it. Otherwise, it's the ugliest thing going. You'd never drive a car that was painted like a bass boat. But you put that shiny, sparkly color in the fiberglass, men will buy it. Right? We're just as bad as the fish that we're trying to catch. That's the same way as sin is. Sin is for us very appealing. It is. Oh, you want a little extra money. You should deserve a little extra money. You deserve a little bit of this. Satan 
He's not going to come to you ugly. He's going to come to you like a fishing lord. Oh, you want this. You want it. Come on. You deserve this. Well, God says, what my stuff is, it's not always right, but in your eyes, but it is from my eyes. And I'm going to show you how to do it through Jesus Christ. And we needed a Savior like Jesus. Because we've already proven we can't do it on our own. We need a Savior. So for that, that's why this morning we say, that the Lord is risen. And we reply back, the Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.